Hey everyone, it's Little Arnie, Little Arnie's Fishing Company. Today we're going to the water, but we're not taking the boat. Going to be checking out the area, lakes and waterways, seeing how they're doing with the recent flooding we've had over the last couple of months. Hopefully they're getting back down to normal. That's coming up today, right here on Little Arnie's. <laughs> Okay, here we are, Spring Hill Park. This is going to be like a home movie back in the 8mm days. I know this goes back way before a lot of years' time, but we used to sit around the uh, movie projector, watch the home movies. Somebody would narrate. That would be me. <laughs> I am narrating. purpose of this video is taking you around the lakes in the area. Lakes, rivers, waterways. Uh, because uh, back in uh, May, it had some terrible flooding. Matter of fact, we're at Spring Hill Park here, Lock and Dam 13, just outside of Barling, Arkansas. Actually, I think it's considered Barling, and this was all underwater. What we're doing first, we're going to the uh, boat ramp on the east side of the park, and nope, not going to be able to. As you can tell, the gates are still locked. That really gets in on that uh, area uh, of the uh, park every time it floods. Now, going over to the other side of the park, but before we do, we're going to look here at the Lock and Dam area. But look at that roadway there, the sand. That sand's there because the water was up this high. And if you look to the right, yeah, there's a boat dock or something over there. All this was underwater. It was uh, pretty bad. I don't know where that could have come from. It had to come from downstream, unless it went over the top of the dam, which it possibly could have because the water was that high. Look at that sign. That sign's been over. I think that was uh, due to the uh, flooding. And it still hasn't gone back down to normal, at least on this side of the dam. Now, this is going to be interesting here. If you look over there off to the right, that is the Lock and Dam 13. That's the Corps of Engineers office where they controlled the locks, the dam, and everything. It was underwater. Matter of fact, uh, this is what it looked like, May 26th. Now we're going to zoom in here, and if you look on top of the building, there are two guys standing on top of the building, talking, telling jokes. They needed to be rescued. Who rescued them? Hey, bring in the U.S. Army. Here we go. Yeah, they're going to be taken off the uh, top of the building there via helicopter, now, let's move on down to the rest of it. Now, this part of the uh, side of the uh, Spring Hill Park, it suffered a lot of damage. It's had a lot of damage over the last couple of years, tornadoes, flooding, and such. This is the boat ramp. Let's look at this boat ramp. Now, if you notice here, on this side of the dam, and I'll, I'll make this a little bit more apparent here in a minute, the water level on this side of the dam, the west side of the dam, is a lot lower. You can see where the water line usually is. So, this side of the dam is, I would say, way below flood stage, and that's a lot of the uh, damage due to the uh, flooding, tornadoes. There's the boat ramp. Boat ramp looks pretty good. The one on the left does. The one on the right, not so sure. But here, this is the courtesy dock. You can see how low that water is. That water is usually up uh, toward the top part of those, uh, those uh, that dock. Now, let's go over the bridge. Now, this bridge that we're going over, for a couple of days, this was the only way you could get to Fort Smith uh, or from Fort Smith to Van Buren or Van Buren to Fort Smith because the other two bridges were closed. That simple. Barling that we came through, Rogers Avenue back in Fort Smith, that's behind us as we're going this way. Over to the right there, if you're wondering what that is, that's a hydroelectric plant. That was pretty much all underwater as well. But uh, Rogers Avenue behind us, back in the uh, heart of Fort Smith, it was uh, uh, underwater and impassable. Over to the left, that is the road that takes you down to the hydroelectric plant. Get a little fishing area back in there. Uh, kind of a cove. Now we're in Van Buren. Where we're going to in Van Buren is Lee Creek Park. But we're going to take a left here and go over the original, or what I consider the original, the old Fort Smith to Van Buren Bridge. I remember going over this when I was a kid back in the 60s. This was the bridge. If you look over to the left, you see the bridge that replaced this bridge. But this has taken us 
down to what was it called goose harbor marina which pretty much isn't there anymore not because of this flood but because of floods past but you can see where it used to be but i wanted to take a drive down through here kind of get the idea yeah there was a marina here and i have a picture somewhere i was looking for it but i couldn't couldn't find it anywhere showing what the uh, marina looked like here a couple two or three years ago when it was here and the flooding kind of floated it off and i just don't think they ever recovered because over the last few years every spring it floods so right through here over right there to the left there's boat ramp but i wouldn't recommend using it uh, and remember that bridge over here that railroad bridge you see that now we're headed down to lee creek now, down here at Lee Creek, what we're doing is looking for ramps that we can launch a boat. Which ones are usable, which ones aren't. That's a good sign. There's a pickup there. It has a, a boat trailer on the back of it. Matter of fact, it was a tracker boat trailer. I'm thinking a 17.5. And there's the water. Something's missing, though. But if we look at the ramp, okay, not recommending you use this ramp. Matter of fact, I, I wouldn't even be thinking about using either ramp. But if you look at this right here, this is the courtesy dock. It either crashed and burned or the water's up. And to be honest with you, the water here doesn't look above normal, but eh, it is in some aspects, but not really. Okay, so next. This is the bridge we hit the, the, the new bridge going into Fort Smith. We were on the old bridge a minute ago. Where we're headed to now is Fort Smith Park. That is another place we can launch a boat into the Arkansas River. This is off Clayton Expressway in Fort Smith. As a matter of fact, you go on around. That's where they're building the uh, museum for the U.S. Marshals. But here we are at Fort Smith Park. And let's take a look at the ramp. Looks pretty usable. At least from what I'm saying, where I'm sitting. But here, I'll get to make this turn here. You'll see it a little bit better. The water looks fine. Nice, calm. Even out there on the river, doesn't look that bad. So, passable. We could give this a passing grade. So, so far, uh, Spring Hill Park uh, in Barling, the uh, West Ramp, and uh, Fort Smith Park, usable. And iffy on that Lee Creek. I'd, I'd wait a little bit longer on that. Now we're in Oklahoma. Where are we going in Oklahoma? Well, we, we've checked out Arkansas River and Fort Smith and Van Buren. Now we're headed to Lake Tinkiller. That's just north of Vian, out there by Tahlequah, Oklahoma. If you're from this area, you're very familiar with Lake Tinkiller. Matter of fact, uh, I pretty much grew up on Lake Tinkiller as far as that goes. Lake Tinkiller was where we went on the weekends. You know, that, Blue Mountain, Sugarloaf, as uh, we've talked about in the past. But uh, it was up here on 4th of July at Tinkiller, and it was 28 feet above flood stage. Everything was a mess. Everything was a mess. Right now, it's on this date. Now, this, again, this Saturday, what, the 20th, July 20th, when uh, this video was made. We're going through Vian, Oklahoma here, headed up to Tahlequah. Now we're coming up to to uh, the turn here. That's McQuicks on the right. Everybody knows McQuicks if you've been to Tinkiller. We're going to take a left, go down to the uh, State Park, Pine Cove Marina. Now what I was saying a moment ago, uh, 28 feet on the 4th. Right now, been towed, it's 15 feet above flood level. Turning into the uh, state park here at Lake Tinkiller. Looks like a lot of activity going on. This is the road taking you down to Pine Cove Marina. I have some uh, family that has a boat down here, and they have not been able to get to it for uh, since the flooding began, but it looks like now everything's good. Now, this road here is closed. Can't go any further. That's because, and you'll see this in a minute, that everything on the other side of Pine Cove Marina, where they have the park and a boat ramp and such, it's flooded there it is you see the courtesy dock or whatever it might be there but usually there's a road down there that and the boat ramp and unable to see that at all next up chicken creek when i had a large bay liner with a uh, cutty cabin it wasn't a big one it was trailerable 
this is where we would launch it. It's 24 foot uh, bay liner, Sierra 2450 or whatever it's called. We come down here and launch it because this was a huge boat ramp. I think you could launch like seven boats at a time down here. Eh, not since the flooding. They've got it locked up. So, you got to turn around. Let's go back into the park, see what's going on down here if they're launching boats at all. You're going to find some pretty weird stuff going on. Now, I stopped here. I talked to the gate attendant. They, they told me that when the water level comes down another five feet, they'll probably be opening up the uh, large ramp area. And you can see right here the flooding. That's a road going down into the lake. You see the trees out there. Obviously, those trees aren't in the middle of the water. They are on land like the rest of them. So, still a long way to go to get down below flooding. Now, over there where that pickup is on the right, I was noticing people launching their, or a couple of people launching their boat. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into this here in a little bit more in detail in a minute. Chicken Creek, we used to come down here a lot when we had campers, RVs, and it was nice. It was quiet. Okay, now let's spin on around here. Uh, oh, okay, I know what we're doing. Okay, there is a area here where people were launching their boats right there, that road going down, but people weren't using it. Uh, here we are. There we go. There's a picture of it right there. Somebody launching the boats, and you can see the kind of flooding that's happening up here. Again, this is Chicken Creek. 15 feet. That's what it looks like when it's 15 feet above flood stage. Okay. And uh, Tinkler usually floods out every year. And there's been a lot of times you had to be real careful. When I was younger, yeah, we used to take the Jessicas and stuff and go out. Now, what, watch right here. Over on the left, you're going to see that truck coming up. Okay, as I stop, you see the truck coming up on the left there, coming up that road. It's pulling a trailer. Now, look behind it. You're starting to see all that traffic move. They're trailered boats. So they're using a road to be able to launch their boat. They're only able to do it one at a time. Now, here's where, the, the obviously, the ramp is over here to my left. Got all the campers and stuff out. But keep your eye over there on the left. There's a jet ski. And there's another boat, and obviously there's vehicles and boats between that and the jet ski. We keep on going up and going and going and going. And there's another uh, boat coming in, that pontoon up there. And there's more boats. They're going to launch one at a time. That's crazy, man. Look how big this line is. Uh, looks like that guy, I don't know if he just got his boat out of the water. That's been my thing. Okay, yeah, you're, you're spending two hours getting your boat launched. How long is it going to take when you're ready to go? Look at that line. If somebody's wanting to, uh, you know, get their boat out of the water, they got to get in that line so they can have access. Okay, so that's Chicken Creek. So, Chicken Creek, uh, pretty popular area. Uh, headed out. Where are we going to next? Don't remember. Uh, but uh, maybe Cookson? Don't remember. But anyway, this is, uh, it, it floods every year. And I, I can't remember a summer that Tinkiller has not flooded. And what's, what's sad about it is all these people up here that all have businesses, they're affected by this flooding. Because if people can't come like they usually would during the summer to enjoy the lake, the businesses suffer. Okay, like I said, next next stop is Cookson. Now, when I was a kid, we used to come up here to Cookson all the time. Matter of fact, Cookson, Oklahoma, originally, the original site of Cookson, Oklahoma, is at the bottom of Lake Tinkler. When they flooded it out back in the uh, 50s or whenever it was, they moved Cookson, Oklahoma, to where it is now. Now, we get down here to Cookson. We came down here on the 4th of July. Didn't video or anything, but came down here on the 4th of July, uh, and but they were launching boats right there. Right to the right where that big tree is, it's blocked now by the uh, dock material. Right there, to the right. That's where they're launching boats. About where that uh, vehicle is in front of me, that's as far as you were going to get. The water was up to that level on the 4th. So it's it's gone down quite a bit. And if you look down through here, actually the water looks almost low in this area of the lake. Cooks, and I remember when I was a kid back uh, in the 60s, maybe the early 70s, uh, my dad brought me up here. We came up to Cookson, and it was the only time I've ever, ever seen Tinkler froze over. 
and the ice it, it, it would crack and it would make a weird strange sound you know you just had to experience it i'm sure people living up north you, you hear that when the ice starts cracking that boom or whatever it's called okay going down into cookson we'll get there in a minute see what's going on here now it amazes me these people come up here and still go camping you know, when you can't get your boat in the water, or it takes forever to get your boat in the water. But hey, you know, if you got a $40,000 camper, you want to use it. Okay, they're using a road too. You can see that already. The white pickup there on the left, launching the blue boat. So, there, so far, are no ramps open for tin killer. People are having to use the roads. You can tell it's a road because there's a stop sign there. <laughs> And what is that way out there in the distance? Is that a uh, courtesy dock? I don't think so. I don't know what that was. Okay, next. Where do we go from here? Not sure. We'll know in a minute. Oh, okay. Our last stop of the day. So Tink Killer is pretty much a no-brainer. This, my friends, is Greenleaf State Park, the home of Greenleaf Lake, and that's what you see in front of you. And what a lake. I know when I was a kid, we came up here a couple of times, but look how beautiful it is. On this day, they were having a fishing tournament. No problem getting boats in, no problem getting boats out of the water. So, if I was to take a boat out, obviously, Sugarloaf, Arkansas River, just not up to my speed yet. You know, my Pro 160, I, I'm just a little leery of taking it out on the river just yet. It's still a little flaky. You know, and the only places you could launch would be uh, there on the uh, west ramp at Spring Hill Park. Uh, you could launch it in Van Buren, but I wouldn't. You know, that, that looked a little flaky to me there at uh, Lee Creek Reservoir, or Lee Creek Park there in Van Buren. And Fort Smith Park. Fort Smith Park looked pretty reasonable, actually. Like, you could uh, launch your boat. Tink Killer, uh, you know, I, I'm not planning on going fishing in Tink Killer until mid-September or later. But I will be going up. Tink Killer will be taking it up there when we go there. Uh, just too many boats. It's a party lake now. You know, it's, I guess it's kind of always been a party lake, but more than ever now, it's really a party lake. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, I'm going to put up a video of something we spotted on Tin Killer while we was up there. We got on, on, on uh, video. Anyway, they were having a fishing tournament here at Greenleaf Park. And this is another lake I'd be frequenting. Matter of fact, uh, probably before too long. i got to get a non-resident fishing license for Oklahoma. I believe that's 50 bucks. So, still, Greenleaf is no, it's, it's a little bit further than Tin Killer. I think it's maybe 10, 15 miles further than Tin Killer. But look at that. Just, just fantastic. All right. So there's our water, lake, river review. If you're in this area, hopefully that helps you out trying to decide where you're going to go. As for us and me and my Tracker Pro 160, I'll be, uh, looks like, headed back to uh, Sugarloaf. But I see myself coming up here greenly for too long as well. Okay, till next time. Hey, remember to... Uh, hit that subscribe button, like us, uh, tell your friends, visit us. We need to get our subscribers up. Uh, the more subscribers we get, uh, the more videos we're going to be able to bring and the more things we're going to be able to do.